Hey, I'm Yannick Wuzdala, bass player, pedal nerd, enthusiast. I'm here at Perfect Circuit to talk a little bit about how we create synth bass sounds with pedals. You do not, trust me, you do not want to be lugging a rack of keyboards around to get these kind of sounds at gigs. And I'm going to run through a few options and, and the process, the signal chain of how I achieve these kind of sounds. So for me, one of the first things in the signal chain is always going to be an octave pedal. I have the MXR Vintage bass octave here. And I have it set to give me this super low subby sine wave sound. So with this pedal, that's the octave one down, maxed out, and then no dry sound and no kind of sub octave two down. So we're basically trying to eradicate the natural sound of the bass and give us something kind of as electronic as possible as our starting point for the synth. Next step is to give it some shape. We're looking for kind of a sawtooth or a square wave. I have the Frederick FX Bug Crusher. It's basically a sample rate reducer and it's gonna act as our oscillator here. And already you can hear we're going into synth world. I'm looking for that sawtooth, that square wave, something with a little bit of rasp. I have some very simple controls on this pedal. Change the pitch of that, or rather the frequency of that. But the real secret of this, the real special source is the filter. To get the most out of the filter, I highly recommend having an expression pedal, as you will see, or hear. When you're able to sweep through that sawtooth or that square wave, then you really start to hear the 70s, you hear uh, the, 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 the oh, shit. Why did I space on the name of the fucking band? <laughs> let it whip, who did let it whip? Daz band. You guys are so young, man, unbelievable. <laughs> um, all right, all right. <laughs> Think all of those classic 70s bass parts, which were more than likely played on a Moog. Um, now we can recreate that in three pedals and have something that's kind of portable to take on the road or take to the studio that doesn't take rocket science to get together, literally in three pedals and three very simple steps. I think we've come up with a pretty convincing synth bass sound. Let's see. Okay, so having used a sample rate reducer to give us our, our modulation, our, our kind of oscillator sound of the, of the square wave slash sawtooth, um, we have a lot of other options. Right now, I have the Copilot FX Orbit hooked up. It's another gated fuzz. As you can see, it has way more controls than the sample rate reducer did. And the gated fuzz can kind of give you that thing where it closes the sound. You know, when you, when you press a key down on a synth and lift it up, the sound is 
is closed immediately. So gated fuzz generally helps, at least to my ear, with that, to bring a little more authenticity to the feel when you're playing. Because we're trying to recreate a keyboard sound with a fretted stringed instrument. So already, we, we have handicaps or a little bit of a disadvantage. So anything we can do to help that cause, sonically speaking, uh, the, the, you know, the better. So Copilot effects, it's a little more aggressive, as you're about to hear. It's our same setup. We've got the octave, the sub-octave going in before. We've got the filter right afterwards. Again, we have a frequency that's super aggressive and pokey in the high end, so we do have some control over that. And we have some control over the gate. It's closing pretty quickly there. It's like an aggressive close at the, uh, uh, right after the note. Another thing I should talk about, especially as we're, we're kind of trying to help our authenticity of synth bass, is the technique we need to use as bass players. You can't have any notes ringing on. Your muting, both left hand and right hand, has to be supremely efficient. So a good example of that is separation between the notes. Let's say we're playing octaves. There's a definite gap, at least in my technique, even if the sound is hanging over, there's a definite gap in the technique between the notes. That allows me to articulate, it allows the pedals not to freak out. Now, if I'm ringing notes on, you don't get this definition, it's kind of almost oscillating between the two octaves. If you really want to get those Those kind of punchy synth bass notes, synth bass lines rather. You really have to be bringing your fingers off the, off the fretboard. The, the note really has to end before you go on to the next one. So it's almost playing too staccato. It's going to feel kind of counterintuitive because you want the sound to be slightly legato, but technically you have to play a little more staccato to get that definition. So let's take a really simple option that a lot of you are already going to have in your pedal collection. It's a bass preamp. This one is by Exotic. It's the bass BB preamp. And I'm simply maxing out the gain and bringing in the volume until the sound breaks up and distorts, therefore giving me a bit of a, bit of a square wave sound to produce our synth sound. Oh, it's noisy. Damn. It's like an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> now, one important thing I want to talk about with, with all of these, with pedals in general actually, but especially with synth bass, is if you have a basic uh, EQ uh, control on, on whatever is causing the distortion. I'm a big fan of going kind of heavy on the treble. It helps push a bunch of things later in the chain, especially the filter, and gives some kind of definition, gives more of a synth quality to it. <laughs> Now, if I take that treble out, you can already hear it's a little duller. And if I really pull it all the way out, you're almost getting no synth, no sine wave, no, no, no square wave rather at all. Max that treble out. Okay, granted, it is very noisy. But let's face it, you're playing this on a loud gig. You're not going to notice the noise. You don't really hear the noise over the sound of the note. So let's crank those two. Bunch of treble. The bass is kind of at 12 o'clock and suddenly it opens up the sound, especially when you're putting it through the filter. And right away you're in business with yet another option for creating synth bass sounds. One thing to keep in mind with any of these pedal combinations when you're using an electric bass or any fretted stringed instruments and these kind of pedals, octave pedals, fuzz pedals, filters is where you're playing on the neck of the instrument. I find the best place to use it is way up the neck, somewhere between the 10th and maybe the 14th fret. Kind of get the roundest sound, the best response from the pedal when we add in our other synth elements. not as easy to mute you're going to have the open harmonic on the 12th fret which is really tough to avoid you know some some notes hanging on here perhaps some transients somewhere but 
find I'm getting the best response out of these kind of pedals way up high on the neck. How about doing some of the more... Some more of those kind of sounds? Yeah. yeah. Now, I know this might not be on every bass player's list of must-haves in a pedal board, but I'm a huge fan of harmony and using the Line 6, the HX Stomp XL, as a harmonizer and building chords. I basically have a couple of four-note chords programmed into the HX Stomp XL. I have the fuzz pedal going into it to give us that square wave sound. And it's coming out the other side into the filter so I can sweep through the frequencies. Another thing I like to do is to have a momentary reverb. So I'll play a note. Just to give one note, one pluck a little bit of depth and then carry on dry over the top of it. So. variant, a nice uh, dynamic variant to be aware of if you have that reverb towards the end of your signal chain. Another option to add to the end of the signal chain to give you some more dynamic in your bass lines is a simple delay. You're going to need tap tempo for this, especially if you're playing in a band context. And I have my delay set at a dotted eighth and I'm tapping a quarter note right here. Basically, it's going to give me a nice dotted eighth note trail. So I have to play way less on the instrument and get way more mileage out of way fewer notes. So. And if I put the feedback a little longer, we'll get more trails. And then we'll make the quarter note a little wider. a nice uh, kind of dynamic layer to add to your signal chain just a delay almost in the end after everything that's come before it just put a delay at the end nice tap tempo get some amazing results so that's it that's my basic thought process and signal chain for creating synth bass sounds with pedals whether you go with the super high-end old vintage or brand new crazy uh, tape delay stuff on the end of your signal or whether you even go with a single pedal like this old SYB3 or the brand new SY1 from Boss. I think the, the, the key here is that imagination and curiosity kind of have to be the biggest driving forces behind anything you're doing with pedals. Using these few basic tools, the octave pedal, the fuzz, the filter, pair that with curiosity, I think you're gonna go uh, a long way and create and find some amazing sounds for yourself. You can find me at yannickguizdala.com. I also have my own YouTube channel where I talk quite a bit about pedals in a show I have a series of videos I have called The Pedal Studio. I would love to hear your feedback about everything we did here today and hopefully I can answer any further questions you might have on synth bass and pedals in general.